What's good everybody, it's Karsten Craning, back at it again with another YouTube video. Today we are going over my pickups and favorites. This is my longest running series on the channel where I go over my recent pickups, the clothes that I bought recently that have been my favorite, and my favorite movies, TV shows, books, and music as well. Before we get too far into that though, I wanna say that by the time this video comes out, we should be at 30,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane because at the beginning of the year, we were only at like 24,000. Because there are so many new people, I thought it would be fun to do like a Q&A video. So whether you've been here since the beginning or if you're new and you just don't know who I am, leave a question down in the comments. Enough of that though, let's just get right into the pickups. The first pickup that I wanna show you guys is this sweater, which is from Rick Owens, Fall Winter 19, Larry. Fall Winter 19, one of my favorite Rick Owens seasons. It is cropped in the body. It's made out of a super soft and warm alpaca fur. And what makes it kind of cool is that it has these leather embellishments or patches on it. If you see a Rick Owens piece and it has a leather embellishment like this one, it's probably from Larry. I've loved wearing this. It's been one of my favorite pieces to wear in fall because it keeps me super warm, but it's also subdued. It's not too loud. Next piece I have, I'm actually wearing, and this is actually from my own label, Karsten Craning. If you guys don't know, I have my own clothing brand or company called Karsten Craning. But this is the Gasha Ducoro pullover. It is a quarter snap, super inspired by the Patagonia Cinchillas. I wanted to make my own version of that in a way, but just have it be a little bit more aggressive and brutalist. It has a cotton shell and an interior super soft polar fleece material. And then on the torso, it has down and it's separated to sort of look like ribs. It also has these nylon patches on the elbows. Currently I'm wearing a size small. It is an oversized fit. Usually I am a medium or large, but I can fit into a small, so you guys might wanna keep that in mind. You guys can go check out my Instagram or my website to see more details about the collection. Next piece I have is from Xlim. Xlim is a Korean brand that is very technical. Think of like Post Archive Faction or Arcteryx Valence, Kiko Kostanov. It would fit in with the likes of those brands. However, what makes Xlim super special is their fabric procurement they're always able to find the craziest fabrics. And this jacket is the perfect example of it. It is like a windbreaker or just a light shell jacket. And it's got a really cool, crazy pattern. But what makes it so different is the material that it's made out of, polyester material, which sort of looks like reptilian skin or like something from Mustafar on, in Star Wars. It's just a really, really unique fabric that has such an interesting corrugated texture to it. Definitely go check out Xlim if you haven't already. Next piece I have is from Roa. This is a hiking fleece from their first clothing collection that Roa dropped. For the past few years, Roa has been making amazing hiking boots, but then exactly one year ago, they dropped a clothing collection which was amazing, which I really, really fell in love with. Specifically, this piece I fell in love with. It took me a while to find one of these for a reasonable price, but I finally got one. I kind of joke that it's like a giant teddy bear fleece, and it has some cool double pockets, one on top, one on the bottom. Super, super heavy, super, super bulky. That has a great shape to it and a great construction. And yeah, definitely go check out Roa. They have a few new collections that are also super cool. Moving on to pants, I have two pairs of pants to show. The first are these from Goldwyn Zero. Goldwyn is a Japanese skiing brand with extremely premium materials, and they're just known for their astonishing quality. However, their line Goldwyn Zero is actually even a step above that, but also Goldwyn Zero works to be more environmentally sustainable, as well as creating extreme forward design. Goldwyn Zero, uh, coincidentally, is also very, very expensive. However, I was able to get one piece on sale, and it's these pants. These are like a technical straight-legged pant, and while at first glance they may look pretty normal, they're just made out of a normal kind of poly uh, technical fabric, I believe. There are actually six hidden pockets in these, that are expertly crafted into the seams. So you have one hidden pocket on the side with a hidden zipper. Then you have two pockets on the back, which are hidden by the flap, which is expertly kind of blends into the seam line. And then there's another seam line 
flap pocket that's hidden. Really, really insane as far as a technical garment goes. Super, super impressive. Beyond being super, super cool from a technical angle, they also look really good and fit well. The next piece I wanna show you guys is also from my own collection. Autumn Winter 23, Karsten Craning. I made these. These are called the Sunico Sori Pants. A super wide, flowy, long pant that have these great pleats at the waist. I probably sampled these pants maybe four or five times looking for the specific fabric to give it the right weight and drape and flow and I finally found this amazing wool blend. Again, these are from my brand Karsten Craning. These and the pullover should be coming out on November 10th. So check me out on Instagram or go to my website for more updates on these. Next piece I've actually had for quite a while but I forgot to put it in a video and it is this little Issey Miyake wallet. It's a bifold wallet that has a few different compartments on the inside where I'm able to keep my cards. It's very lightweight. It doesn't really show in your pocket, super small. And it is from Issey Miyake Bao Bao. Part of the beauty of it, it's very like good constructed, but it's also very flexible. So it doesn't feel very rigid in your pocket, but you can also put quite a lot in here, but it is still very good quality and it's still from a very, very cool designer. The last pickup I have is this bag, which is from Coat et Seal, and it is this technical backpack. Coat and Seal are known for creating some of the coolest and most unique backpacks on the market currently, and this is definitely the best backpack I've ever owned. Um, it has a very unique design where you have this big flap here that has an interior pocket where things can be accessed and it has a few interior pockets in there. And then most notably, it has this section right here, which is for laptops. And you can just kind of zip it open and you can put one or two laptops in there. Coat and seal bags are incredibly good quality. This might be the nicest um, quality bag that I've ever owned. It's made out of a super, super uh, sturdy nylon construction, but also just looks very good and unique. There's not really a lot of bags like Coat and Seal and they are really um, pushing boundaries in terms of what a bag can look like and still be functional. Definitely go check them out if you're looking for a unique bag for work or school. Now a little bit on my favorites. Let's start with movies and TV shows. The first movie I wanna talk about that I saw is Lost in Translation. This is a Sofia Coppola movie. I had like three or four friends recommend it to me in the span of a week, which just told me I really needed to watch this movie. So I watched it. It has an amazing soundtrack, uh, which has a lot of shoegaze. I believe the guy from My Bloody Valentine actually did most of the soundtrack. And it's set in Tokyo with Scarlett Johansson and Bill Murray, and they sort of have a relationship. The visuals are super cool. It was shot in the early 2000s, and a lot of the shots are super beautiful. Also really, really funny. I didn't expect this movie to be as funny as it would be. Definitely go check out this movie if you're looking for something that is artsy but also is a little bit lighter in subject matter and is also really funny. The next TV show I want to talk about is Twin Peaks The Return. Twin Peaks was one of my favorite TV shows uh, growing up. The original series came out in the early 90s and it is by David Lynch, and it's all about a murder in a small town in Washington. And The Return, which is 25 years after the original events, came out in 2017. Uh, I did not watch it in 2017, and I had not watched it until this past month. Um, I don't know why I didn't watch it. I think it was because for like a long time it was only on Showtime, and I didn't have it as a streaming platform, so I just never watched it. As I was re-watching the original series with my girlfriend, she wanted to continue on, so we found the return, and I was like, oh, it's available. I feel like there's a lot of crazy theories about it, and it's a phenomenal show. If you need a new show to watch, I would definitely check out Twin Peaks. It's one of the best shows of all time. The Return is definitely more David Lynchian, a little bit more artsy and avant-garde, but still very, very cool. Go check out Twin Peaks. Two books that I've read recently that I've really enjoyed. First is Life for Sale by Yukio Miyashima. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I've read a lot of Yukio Miyashima books, but this one is definitely one of my favorites. Life for Sale is kind of a humorous book about someone who kind of puts their life for sale in a newspaper ad and gets all kinds of different zany characters uh, trying to buy his life for various purposes. A little dark, it's sort of a dark humor, but it's mainly just very funny. 
Miyashima isn't really known to be a humorous writer, but this book I thought was definitely very funny, but also has a lot of beautiful moments and in Miyashima style has very beautiful uh, poetic writing. And next, probably the complete opposite of that, I also read Cormac McCarthy's The Blood Meridian. Uh, Cormac McCarthy is a American author who often writes about the United States, sort of the West. If you are familiar with the Coen Brothers film No Country for Old Men, he was actually the one who wrote the book that the film is based on. And Blood Meridian is often regarded as his magnum opus uh, book, which I read and I must say is really good but also very, very dark. Probably the darkest book I've ever read in my life. But also the writing is incredibly beautiful. Definitely go look into it before you just go take my recommendation and read it because the subject matter is incredibly dark and sad. But I think Cormac McCarthy has written one of the best and most interesting villains of all time uh, in The Judd. Please go leave a question down in the comments for the Q&A if you have any. And then I'd also like to remind everybody that I have a collection coming out on November 10th with some of the pieces that you saw in this video. If you're interested, go follow me on Instagram or go check out my website. And I'm gonna leave you guys off with some music. There's a lot of new music on here because it's been an incredible year for music and there have been so many good releases recently. Thank you for watching. My name is Karsten Craning, signing off. Arjun, they couldn't take it. Kind of flagrant. Night bomb me, I'm on Collins and I'm... Tight to see me with a perk and ask for the half. You the type to buy a grandma. Club with a Mickey Mouse clip. This ain't Disney. Spin up in a face shot. Still I.